He starts out blaming women. He also blames the strikes. He actually blames the DCEU. He blames the VFX scandal and Kevin Feige indirectly. Blaming people. He also blames COVID. Fuck your woman. He's blaming your husband and your boyfriend. So there I was, no crap, looking for something worth making a video about. And there's literally nothing going on at the end of the week because it's Thanksgiving week. And I started to have to dig a little bit further into my news articles and stuff to find something to talk about. And I accidentally ran into this article from a guy named Mark Hughes. Apparently he's some type of screenwriter, a contributor to a Forbes.com. But he had this article talking about uh, the Marvels going into its second week. So this thing's like maybe 10 days old or something like this. But once I got done with it, I was smiling so big and I was so happy. I was like, I have got to cover this thing. This guy had the biggest cope in the history of the world on this bad boy. He was making excuses left and right. and He was blaming everybody. But, uh, well, I, I, he kind of blames Kevin Feige. So he was blaming everybody but the movie and the actors themselves. It was everyone's fault, but the Marvel said it absolutely bombed. And I just thought it was so amazing. He opened up saying this. While Marvel Studios expected the Marvels to blast off the higher box office last weekend, the Captain Marvel sequel from Nia DaCosta still topped the box office for the weekend and officially became the highest grossing theatrical release of all time by a black woman director at $110 million. While that is certainly a glasses half full proclamation from Mr. Hughes that this is not in fact an enormous failure on the part of Nia DaCosta, or the Marvels, or Marvel Studios, or Kevin Feige, or Disney, it made $110 million on opening weekend, and it is the highest grossing film in the history directed by a black woman, even though it's going to lose like $200 million likely. Uh, actually, probably more than that. It's probably going to be over $200 million when it's all said and done. So this might not be the big flex that uh, Mr. Hughes thought it would. And then he starts laying the blame, people. Let's hear who is to blame for all this. He starts out blaming women, and I agree with this, Mark. What looked like a sure thing for the Marvels to dominate the November holiday window and play well into December is now turning into a what-went-wrong scenario. After Barbie took home more than $1.4 million this summer and Taylor Swift The Eras Tour became the biggest concert movie of all time last month with a certified blockbuster at $240 million and counting, it looked like women and girl audiences were flexing their power at the multiplex. That's right, women. It's your fault the movie didn't do well. That's right, women. It's little girls' fault that they didn't make their parents go make them see the Marvel's movie and go buy some popcorn and spend 50 bucks to see a movie they didn't want to see. It is not Nina Costa's fault. It's certainly not the Marvel's fault. Women let this movie down. And uh, I got to say, I think Mark is on to something here. It is women's fault. If you look at the, I don't know, the, just the demographics of who went and saw the Marvel's, it was mostly men. We were actually there to support the damn thing. Women didn't show up, and they certainly didn't show up with their daughters like they did for Barbie. Although, technically, if you want to think about it, Barbie is an iconic girl's toy that has literally been in like every generation of women, probably that are alive right now, that were able to go to movies. So it might have been something that was very important to like a wide range of females. Well, typically, just typically, girls don't grow up reading superhero comic books, so they might have missed a mark on that one. And then, you know, hey, Taylor Swift's been a big deal for, for a long time. I'm glad people supported my girl T-Swift. You know, she's dating Travis Kelsey. I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. You know, and I remember riding around with my nieces and nephews. And my nieces and nephews are in their 20s now. You know, when Taylor Swift turned on and they were all excited. And they're all employed and have money and probably went to go see the movie. So I think there was a a cultural significance to the Barbie movie and Taylor Swift that the Marvels just didn't have. That might have been what the problem was, but it still is women's fault. It's certainly the little girl's fault, like Mark said. He also blames the strikes. Wider marketing for films besides trailers and TV spots was hard without cast on hand to promote the Marvels as a strike dragged on and undermined their performance of so many projects. And the MCU is particularly famous for how connected fans and audiences feel to these films precisely because the cast are always so involved in maintaining that connection. I don't know, man. I never, like, was connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe because I was like, man, I just really like that Mark Ruffalo fucking interview from two weeks ago. I was like, I wasn't sure about Captain America Winter Soldier, but after Chris Evans did that interview talking about whatever nonsense he was talking about, you know, I just had to go see it because I just feel that connection with Chris as a person. Now, I think people are actually connected to the characters and the storytelling 
And the fact that they did a shared connected universe where everything felt like it meant something and it was building towards something. I don't think it was probably the uh, the interviews themselves. And Brie Larson is notoriously awkward on the PR campaigning trail and obviously turned off a lot of people even before Captain Marvel and kept that going on after that. So I do agree that perhaps the strikes weren't exactly a positive for the film. I agree with that point. I don't think they actually detracted probably too much from the overall box office. Next up, he actually blames the DCEU. That's right. While I don't think an overarching or permanent superhero fatigue is at play, I do believe the genre is suffering from a combination of factors that undeniably include diminished public enthusiasm due to the collapse of interest in DCEU and the also ran feel of some of the Sony live action non-MCU Spider-Man spinoff films. That's right. It was Ezra fucking Miller's fault. And I agree with this one. Ezra Miller can ruin everything. He ruined the DCEU. He ruined the first Justice League movie. He ruined the Flash and he ruined the Marvels. Without Ezra Miller and his one person crime spree across America, well, actually the world, because he was in Iceland committing crimes and assaulting people there too, the Marvels would have been fine. The DCU, the bottom dropped out and it killed the MCU. Is that how it really worked? Like, the MCU has been having bomb after bomb for like five years now. And in the meantime, we did get Endgame. You know, we did get the, the Spider-Man No Way Home. Probably somewhere in there was Infinity War. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, while not a particularly good film, actually made a whole lot of money. So I just don't feel like the DCEU uh, not performing well actually impacted the MCU. Perhaps there is a little superhero fatigue, but I don't believe that's actually real. I think the fatigue is over shitty movie. It's shitty movie fatigue, bad movie fatigue, where they're replacing all the cool heroes with lame heroes like uh, like Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. Next up, he blamed the VFX scandal and Kevin Feige indirectly. Marvel, while not suffering major problems or anything remotely on par with the exaggerated press claims and certain fan reactions online, has still also had some issues with their films as well. From the VFX artists complaining about rush conditions that resulted in less than polished CGI to a large slate of streaming series necessitating Feige stepping away from his usual hands-on role in most of the MCU theatrical releases and the simple fact of enthusiasm being impossible to maintain at the fullest levels achieved by the time the Avengers Endgame arrived. Now, this is the closest that, uh, that I believe Mr. Hughes actually gets to having a point here. I do believe the string of movies from Marvel Studios with really, really bad CGI probably um, got people a little on edge, like, what the hell is going on here? Certainly, Kevin Feige being stretched really thin didn't help out. But also, Kevin Feige going out of his way not to hire good writers well, was a big problem. Kevin Feige going out of his way to hire directors based on their gender identity or maybe their, their surface features and stuff like that because he needed to have a black female director for the Marvels rather than going out there and getting somebody that was actually an action director or maybe somebody that had had success in films up to that point probably uh, was a contributing factor as well. But hey, maybe it was the VFX game. They're like, that goddamn Vo Victoria Alonso was so mean to those nerds in that room that were making <laughs> fake stuff happen on the screen that I, I can't take it anymore. They deserve better. I can't support the Marvels. I think if the Marvels was a good movie, people would have uh, probably forgiven or even forgotten all of that stuff and just went and saw it because it was good. I, I think the, the problem is that it wasn't a good movie. But I might be wrong because he's not done blaming people. It was bad branding that really killed the Marvels. The film didn't carry the title Captain Marvel 2 to drive home for viewers that this was a sequel to another movie Everyone saw and liked. I realize the title of the Marvel sounds cooler than a numbered sequel, but Marvel is successful precisely because it's been so great at branding and audiences respond to MCU branding well. I too believe that the movie probably should have been Captain Marvel 2, but I don't think the fact that it was called the Marvels really created that much confusion. I believe most people knew that this was a sequel to uh, Captain Marvel, and I think that's why a lot of people didn't go see it. I don't think a lot of people that saw the movie, and certainly a lot of people did see Captain Marvel, like liked it. I don't think they loved it. They thought it was pretty bland and boring and not all that 
important to the MCU itself and was actually in and of itself a bait and switch. You were told you need to see Captain Marvel if you want to be able to fully enjoy Endgame. And everybody was on board to see Endgame. It went over $3 billion worldwide, the highest grossing movie in the history of movies. And we were told Captain Marvel is integral to the continued uh, shared universe that ends in Endgame. And people were like, fuck that bait and switch thing. That movie wasn't very good to begin with. Aid Brie Larson chaps my ass. Iman Vellani just is enough to overcome that. So it was actually bad branding. If it was called Captain Marvel 2, I believe uh, Mr. Hughes thinks it would have hit a billion dollars. I disagree on that one. I think Captain Marvel wasn't good enough probably to warrant a sequel. Although I probably would have done it because it did make a billion dollars. But do not underestimate the fact that people were, uh, they get the old okie doke from Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige that it was important to Endgame, which it wasn't. We were lied to. He also blames COVID. There's also COVID-19, which remains a factor. And the fact that we are seeing not just new COVID-19 variants, but also flu and RSV rising in places around the country, plus children being in school at the moment reduces weekday box office potential, which means it can't help make up a lot of lost ground and benefit from even wider daily word of mouth as easily. Of course, it has to have been COVID-19. That was the culprit all along. Without COVID-19, there would be no MCU downgrade as far as the box office, and it wouldn't have bottomed out at the Marvels. The MCU would still be strong. It had nothing to do with the fact that there was a string of movies that absolutely blew donkey dicks. It has nothing to do with the fact that Shang-Chi sucked and the Eternals sucked and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness wasn't very good and uh, Thor Love and Thunder was fucking putrid and Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania was also fucking putrid leading into this movie and people are like, maybe, maybe, just maybe the MCU just isn't for me anymore. They don't really have a direction going anymore and why should I keep investing when they make crap film after crap film after crap film? And maybe I already found my exit point, and it was certainly before we got to the Marvels themselves. Maybe that's what it is, or maybe everyone had COVID again. Maybe it was flu season, and we all know historically, whenever flu happens, movies bomb. That is, there's a direct correlation between movies bombing and people having the sniffles. It has nothing to do with the fact that the movie sucked and the MCU wasn't very good right now. Absolutely not. And then finally, you knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. Everyone knew this was coming. Mr. Hughes decides to turn coat and blame his own people. He's blaming men, me and you. And well, if you're a woman, he's blaming your husband or your boyfriend or perhaps even your brother or your dad that you really liked. It's all our fault. We cannot ignore the fact that the film received mixed critical reactions and a B grade from audiences Underlying this is data pointing to far worse reception for the Marvels among male viewers whose significantly lower scores drove the average score down. Meanwhile, many male reviewers seem inclined to engage in dismissing superhero movies starring women and for audiences of women and girls. Indeed, some of the worst examples include critics literally complaining that the Marvels feels like it was made for teen girls, but not for actual comic book fans, as if the former cannot be the latter. This chronic, myopic sexism is shameful and an embarrassment to both the fandom and entertainment journalism as a whole. All right, I added the as a whole part at the end, but that's that's what he said. It's, it's myopic sexism and shameful and embarrassing to the fandom and journalism as a whole. Uh, I hate to break this to you, bad boy, uh, but people looking to see superhero movies there certainly are 12-year-old girls in there. There are teen girls in that overall like diagram of people. But the amount of people looking for superhero movies that also want to see stuff that would entertain 12-year-old girls specifically, you're like cutting out probably 85% of your audience at a minimum. You actually aimed and directed your marketing you're directing your story and everything about it into a very specific portion of the audience rather than making something that would appeal to the entire audience, which is something that really hadn't been a problem for the MC moving up to this. And you're like, what well, Wes, Black Panther blew up. Black Panther was awesome. Certainly, it got a lot of notoriety because there was a large uh, black cast and crew, and it was certainly a, a big moment for black audiences, but it didn't do that to spite 
the rest of the audience themselves. If you were Latino, if you were Asian, if you were white, if you were Inuit, you still wanted to see Black Panther because he was awesome, absolutely amazing in Captain America Civil War. He had a really good character there, and the trailers looked really good. And they went out there, and they got an awesome writer-director named Ryan Coogler who knew what he was doing. And in this case, you went out and got someone that didn't know what they were doing. You hired bad writers, and then you made a movie and specifically aimed it to alienate the rest of your audience. And you said, man, where the hell are you? Fuck you, bro. The majority of people that went and saw the Marvels were men. It made up the vast majority of the audience itself. It's not our fault the movie sucked. What, was I supposed to lie on the exit score so I wouldn't out myself as, a, as the fucking patriarchy? What am I going, well, you know what? Technically, the Marvels really was made for girls. And if I was a girl, I would have given it an A. So I'll give it an A. Yeah, I'm not going to consider myself and my response to the movie and whether or not it was entertaining to me in the equation because it wasn't made for me. Like, that's just the, like, the dumbest thing ever. Shockingly, when you make a movie on a $300 million budget and then you aim it into a demographic that can probably make you a couple hundred million max, uh, you're going to lose money. And it was an enormous oversight and misstep on the part of Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige. But Mr. Hughes was not done. He's done blaming. He's done apologizing. He's done making excuses for the Marvels. But he did want to bookend this report on the Marvel's terrible box office with something a little bit more positive. At the end of the day, the Marvel's is underperforming because of all these various factors and more. And whatever else we can say, the end result is the film will most likely be considered a flop with a box office outcome similar to The Incredible Hulk back in the earliest days of the MCU. I will not be considering the box office outcome of the Marvel's anywhere in the vicinity of The Incredible Hulk. When The Incredible Hulk came out, there was no MCU. We'd only had Iron Man. And yes, we did get a brief appearance, I believe, from uh, Nick Fury in Iron Man, I think, in the post credit scenes of that movie. You didn't even know that was going to happen in there. There was nothing connected about it. And certainly the MCU was not a billion-dollar franchise at that point. So the context really matters. But also the budget of The Incredible Hulk was $150 million, which was a lot of money 15 years ago. And it's still a lot of money. That was a really big budget movie. But we do know that the Marvel's budget is well over $100 million more than that. And if it comes in with the exact same box office outcome as The Incredible Hulk, that means it's going to lose a shitload more money. And they spent so much more money marketing the movie out to the masses as well. So this thing is a much worse outcome of that. This is a Flash-level bomb. This is an Indiana Jones-level bomb. This is a Waterworld-type situation. This is not an Incredible Hulk situation where you took a chance. It did okay, kind of. But it didn't really blow up like Iron Man. This is something much different. This is an enormous black eye on the part of Kevin Feige, Marvel Studios, Disney, and really on Mark Hughes himself for being such a whiny baby and having to cope so hard and not realizing they just made a really fucking bad movie made for the wrong audience. And it absolutely blew up in their faces, which was the expected outcome. We've been talking about it for six months, at least by the time this thing actually happened. This is not the first time people had, had to go out there and make excuses for something associated with girl power in the MCU not performing well. We do know that Miss Marvel did not do well on Disney+. Plus. It didn't do well on ABC either. And they had to make all kinds of excuses for why this didn't blow up. Although this was quite predictable as well. A character no one's ever heard of or even cares about. Definitely check this one out right here. There's also a link in the video description.